Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pro Football Alliance show. Right, why is he in there? Frankie. 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 I know you. Yes, Frankie. you rang. Get 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 the background off. It won't let me. Yeah, your background's incorrect. Well, it won't let me because I don't have it. So you have to get this background off. All right, let me get this background off. Jesus, Jesus you're freaking out, and here you go messing up the background. Your background's incorrect. Listen, Wrong league. Listen, my background is my brand. I am the host of the XFL STL talk oh show God. and Pro this Football Alliance. I am dirty. Sitting next to me is Mr. The man who I've never seen so nervous. Look at the camera, Fink, Frankie. Look at the camera. I'm going to kill you. Listen, look at the camera. Um, look at the camera. Let me you take know. my glasses off. I have never seen a man so stressed in my entire life. Over the show we are about ready to have. And plus all the logo, the other logos didn't match. The other backgrounds didn't match with my uh, green screen. So that was the reason why I couldn't change it. Only you. Only you because you did kindergarten, uh, kindergarten graphics. Let's just bring in our special guest, shall we? Because Do I don't want to hear you talk. I well, want to hear them wanna... talk. I got special we, surprises for them. Will you be quiet for I mute you? We have one, two. Three, four, five, six. And they're all laughing at you because they think you're a fool. We have six special guests. Do you want to tell everybody what this show is? Or are we just going to bring people on, first of all? Well, this is a special uh, production, special show, which I've, been, which I've been working on day and night. You can tell. The USFL Alumni and Legends Show with uh, Michigan Panthers. Our guests, our wonderful guests, which I appreciate them coming on board. And they're all waiting in the room for now, you. Now, see, Frankie, you didn't say they were all wonderful beforehand. You were talking about how much of a pain in the butt it was. And all of that. I mean, I think you talked bad about each and every one of these guys. At no, one I did not. You know I love every single one of them. No, Frankie, I don't know. You know I, you're the XFL guy who I can't stand. Now, can we bring in our guests? Well, which, what, which one do you want to bring in first? I got it. Let's bring in Mr. All of them. Let's bring in Mr. Holloway first, the guy that you bashed so bad. Oh, my God. Mr. Holloway, don't believe anything he said. Hello, Mr. Holloway. How are you, sir? Hey, what's going on, fellas? Sir, you should have heard what Frankie was saying. He was talking, just saying that Mr. Holloway, I hope he comes on. It was just unbelievable, sir. And I have to apologize for Frankie's appearance and that haircut that he has on that he's wearing tonight, sir. I have to apologize. No, 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 Frankie. Frankie wouldn't talk about me like that, would he? That's right. Frankie wouldn't talk about me like I love that. You to death and I thank you for helping me put this thing together. Uh, that's no problem, man. Well, Mr. Holloway, since you you were here with us on the USFL Alumni and Legend Show, who would you like to bring? Who would you like me to bring in next? I got an idea. A guy that you caught a lot of touchdown passes from. Would you like to introduce? Oh, well, would you like to introduce uh, our guest? Well, the. Uh... First USFL Championship MVP, Mr. Bobby Abair. Hey, hey what's up? There is Bobby, what's happening? Nothing much. Uh, you know, just doing uh, Saints football this day and age, and uh, we just had the draft. And I'm telell you, watch the Saints are going to be a dark, a dark horse in the NFC. I'm telling you, watch it. Uh, I if agree. Davis Winston plays well. Uh, the Saints. They definitely could maybe shock someone in the playoffs. You heard it here first. There you go. All right. There's Mr. Bobby A. Bear, sir, the legend in Louisiana. Frankie, look at Frankie. I think Frankie's got a tear in his eye because you're on the show, sir. You should have heard him. If you and Frankie lived close to each other, I think Frankie, you were Frankie's man crush, is how much he loves you. Well, well, well but I can tell you, Frankie kind of knows what he's talking about. If he's comparing the USFL to the XFL, Come on, this idea, the old USFL, how can you even put that in XFL category? Thank you, Bobby. Thank when you. When you look at the old USFL, do you know the greatest pass rusher in professional football history was the USFL or Reggie White with the Memphis Showboats? Yes, that is so true. You've had, okay, who played quarterback in the XFL that's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Did Jim Kelly, uh, 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 Steve Young? 
And even how about the first African-American quarterback who won a Super Bowl? Doug Williams, Oklahoma Outlaws, Washington Redskins. No, listen. The, 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 you're at, you're XFL, the XFL right. hopes they could be like the USFL was back in the day. <laughs> See, there you go, Frankie. You're all worried about it. Look, the guy's giving me shit from the get-go, and you're crying. <laughs> That's because so be you're a pain in the ass. We've got guests waiting. we got to right. bring them all in. Shut your mouth. I'm going to let Mr. A. Beer announce our next one. Sir, who would you like me to bring in next? Do you have uh, Mr. John Corker? Is John what? Corker in the house? That's funny because that was the guy I was looking at that was laughing at everything you were saying and who has another great set of hair like Mr. Holloway does, unlike Frankie in that. Hey, what's $2. up, brother? <laughs> what's up, hey, JC? Hey. Bobby, you still How got you that baby man? face, man. <laughs> Derek, what's up, boy? What's happening, yeah, JC? Baby, it's been a minute, man. Baby. Face it's with good to see you, man. Oh, Mr. my God, man. Y'all got to excuse me, man, hey. but I just bust out and start crying here, man. I mean, no, it's, it's just been two or three years, man. Good to it, see you guys, man. Good health. It, hey, Bobby, you ought to just cut it all off, Bobby. Hey, let, let me just tell you what my father told me. He no, said, no, hey, I have, a, I have a lot of hair. I have a lot of hair. Rogue game <laughs> works. I'm telling you. Hey. Rogue game works. My barber, my barber told me a few years back, he said, John, he said, uh, what are you holding on to? I said, I said, man, I said, I'm, I'm thinking that with all these new hair products out there, I might have a chance to grow it back. He no. said, man, let it go. <laughs> hey, hey, but listen, but hey, but most of the time, black guys always look better with a bald head than white guys. <laughs> <laughs> you look at Michael Jar and everybody. You know? hey, <laughs> hey, Bobby. I tell you what, brother, you a few years away from really testing that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. You know, I'm telling you, just a bad camera angle because I'm telling you. Have, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what it is, Bobby, a really seen. bad camera angle. <laughs> guys, hold on. Hold on. I can see we're having a reunion here. And, all, all right, right so, Mr. Mr. Coker, who would you like us to bring on next? Hey, man, the one and only Novo Bojovic. Well, you know, that, I'm glad you said that because Frankie, again, if Frankie lived next to Novo, oh, shut up. We got, we have a number. Oh, this guy. No, 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 Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold Oh, oh man, tremendous! Hey, hey, no, it, I, hey, I'm off. I gotta recharge my phone. Let me fuck it. But anyway, listen. All no, right, so Bobby, you, Bobby, you, Bobby, you better get back. You better get back here, Bobby. <laughs> the fans are waiting. Hold on, hey, listen. No, my um, my English got a lot of better because uh, I just moved away from Bobby. He moved away from Bobby. Better. Bobby, <laughs> get your computer and you better connect. All right, he's going to get. He's going to charge his phone. All right, Mr. Novo, who would you like to bring in next? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Let's bring Matt Stanley. Oh, Mr. Poor Williams. He's the last guy. I feel bad for him. No, these are all the me, Mr. Williams. Having Mr. Williams is last. You all should really be ashamed of yourself. You know, see, Frankie, you, you sit here and you you said bad things about every single no, one. I of did guys. not. Oh no, my God. Well, you were talking about how Novo was the greatest thing ever. You loved him, and that if you 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 would talk about that if he, he was around you, you would be his man crush, Mr. Matt. How are you, sir? Hey, dude, hey. hey, these guys look like they could still play, huh, Frankie? <laughs> Matt, oh, he yeah, promised me he wouldn't do that. Look, look, look. Look. Oh, wow. <laughs> he got some eligibility left. The gun show. He gave us all a gun show up there. Uh, hey, Bobby. <laughs> hey, Bobby. Some some all turns right, gray, JC. Some turns gray. Some turns loose. Night. <laughs> oh. What's happening, Matt? How you, How you been, man? Guy. Oh, oh this is awesome, oh, man. Williams, wow. I bring him in. Uh oh, you guys made Mr. Williams mad. He left. Oh no, no. Bring <laughs> JW back. We'll get him back in. But this is the Michigan Panther team, the team to win the first. Uh, now, according to Fox, according to Fox, gentlemen, this year, uh. You guys were not the first to play in the USFL, according to Fox. Fox said that the new the first touchdown was scored by Louise Perez. Shut up, Frankie. I'm doing the interview here. 
so what do you guys think of Fox not let not giving you guys any credit for the USFL? And we'll start with since Matt, you came in, we'll start with you first and then we'll go around the room. Well, I, I think Bobby kind of said it earlier. I mean, you can't compare this league to to the other leagues, in my opinion. I mean, we had three, what, Pittsburgh Steelers on our offensive line that had, what, six Super Bowl rings amongst them. And you had uh, Anthony Carter and Holloway and Corker and, you know, first-rate guys and Jim Kelly and uh, Herschel Walker and tons of USFL uh, Heisman Trophy winners. I don't think you can really compare the leagues, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Novo. Well, I, I got to tell you, I got to be straightforward then. Uh, and uh, as far as USFL, I respect these guys, these athletes these days, but there's no comparison. Uh, the, the league that we were in, we were competing really, like Matt said, we were competing with the uh, NFL and uh, so many great athletes. As a matter of fact, you're looking at him, Bobby Hebert, and you got John Corker that was uh, one of the first round draft picks from Oklahoma State and I mean, played for Houston Oilers. And we can go on and on from uh, Jim Kelly, Steve Young, Herschel Walker, and and Doug Flutie's, and it, it's so many. I mean, uh, look at Philadelphia Stars. They had so many great athletes from Sam Mills and uh, Irvin Eadman and so many uh, great athletes. So uh, anyhow, I, I just don't see, uh, there's no comparison, uh, let's put it that way. So this league that, that I look at this new USFL, I look at it more as a development uh, where we were totally uh, different type of players that we had at that time. All right, Mr. Uh, second Gun there, uh, Mr. Uh, Cor Coker. What's your take on this new USFL? Let me tell you, I'm, I'm going I'm to put it. I'm going to put it in this perspective here: is that you you got management basically trying to bash the players uh, from the other league and not giving us our due. Our due, and I'm not going to do that as an athlete. You know, hey man, I'm I'm pulling for these guys because I tell you, man. I, I knew that I was ahead of my time, and, and uh, boy, I'd sure like to be coming out now, I'll tell you that. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> hey, you hear what I'm saying? But, yeah. You know, I mean, that, that, when you really look at it, man, these guys are trying to put together a plan that can put more athletes on the field, man. And, and, and being an athlete, man, I'm, I'm all for that, you know. Um, I just don't think that. We have to do the comparing and the bashing of the other league to get that accomplished. You know, uh, these guys got a good game plan in mind, and, and you know, I really hope they're able to see it through. But, man, I'm going to tell you, that USFL in 1983 was so viable as a league and a unit, man, that, uh, you know, with uh, with the owners that we had, man, and, and I just – I think we, we – we tried to bite off a little bit more than we can chew early on in that league. Uh, you know, uh, play, uh, people are making investments, man, and they want to see returns. So you get a you get a perspective of let's make it happen right now, you know. But man, you look for the last three years. When has anybody ever come in and took number one and number two draft choices away from the NFL for three consecutive years, bro? So that. And, and, and produce seven to ten Hall of Famers from that. I mean, so we had a viable league, man. We just we made a few mistakes along the way uh, that curtailed that league. But the intentions were great, but the timing was just a little bit off, man. So I, I mean, I don't want to really get into the comparison thing, man. But kudos for these guys, man, that's getting an opportunity to showcase their talents. For whatever level because you know you're always going to have borderline guys and if they can get a chance to get on the field and and display their talents man and have an opportunity to get there on the big field man then so be it man i'm all for it man you know there you just, go yeah, right here safe, John Kirk calling you captain america sir <laughs> Hey guys, real quick, can Mr. Holloway, can you send John Williams the link again? Because I have a special video to show him, and so he's part of it. <laughs> send me the link again. Yes, yes sir. I think his link. I think he. I think he lost service, and that's why. That's why he dropped out. Okay, I'll send it to him again. All right, now I don't. I think Bobby, guys. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but Bobby actually looks really 
I don't know. For some reason, he looks a lot younger and a lot prettier with that long blonde hair and those glasses on. Man, let me tell you. Would you guys they, agree? They, 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 may be saying, they may be saying the other quarterbacks were the best quarterbacks in the league, but Bobby Abair was the best-looking quarterback in the USFL in the history, and he was the best quarterback. <laughs> yeah, he was. Bobby, so your my question, the question that we have for that everybody is, what is your take on the new USFL? Uh oh, did we lose him? He's frozen. He's frozen. Yeah, like he froze up. There we go. Oh, there we go. Did you hear me, Bobby? I think he's on. I think he's not me. I think he's not working, Frankie. Uh, the joy. I know. Hold on. Let me check something. Yep, everything's good on my end. In the end. meantime, let me show this highlight with uh, Bobby and uh, and AC. Here we go. Okay. Holloway is back in. He's had an upset stomach, but he's back in the ball game now. That's Carter in motion. Holloway's wide open. The first man to throw a touchdown in the USFL championship game and the first man to catch it, Mr. A Bear, Mr. Holloway. All right, yeah. Thank you, thank you. It was a great night that night. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bobby, can you hear us? We can see him, but we. No, we can see him. I think his connection's not so good. Might have to go plug his phone in. So what was it like, guys, you guys playing in that first championship game? Wait a minute. I didn't get a chance to put my take in on it. I got some things to say about it. You last month. But, yeah, go ahead and refresh everybody what you said from the last time we had you on about the USFL, sir. Well, like I said, what I, I think about the USFL, I have some different thoughts now, but they're pretty much still the same. What I think is that it's, it's like John said, it's, it's a great thing that players are getting a chance to play and show the talent. You got coaches that are getting a chance to coach. But I think they should have called the league another whole different name. They should have came up with their own team names and their own team colors and called it something different other than the USFL. Okay. Our league, the original USFL was built to compete against the NFL. This league was was built to be a farm league for the USFL. I mean, for the NFL. So there's really no comparison in the leagues. Um, once again, I, I love to see those guys out there playing, but they should have called it a whole completely different thing. And I listen to some of the announcers. I don't really watch it, but I don't hear anything about the original players, uh, about any original coaches. Um, some young people think that this is really new, that this they really came up with this all by themselves. You know, and that's the, the sad part about it is they're not giving the players and the coaches that, that were part of their original USFL any credit whatsoever. But that's what this is about, uh, Mr. Holloway. Uh, this is what this show is about. That's why the YouTube, USFL Forever YouTube channel, all the other YouTube, uh, USFL Facebook pages as well. That's what it's all about, to uh, solidify, to, to basically um, cement the legacy of this league. Now, I got a question for you and Bobby, if hopefully Bobby can, can hear me and his mic is working. Um, that night, obviously Bobby was scrambling around. Did you expect to get that touchdown or was it supposed to go to AC on that play? Well, once you started scrambling, you know, um, it was, it was who can get open. So I saw everyone, like I was in the end zone, I saw everyone going toward Bobby, which was toward the sideline. So I just, shifted my 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 weight and shifted my whole self a little bit back to the right to the middle of the field so everyone once again was going toward the sideline and i just found a little open space and bobby found me so um i to tell you the truth i forget the 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 play the name whether we're supposed to go to ac or not but once again when 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 the quarterback starts scrambling is whoever can get open whoever can find the quarterback and the quarterback can find them and uh matt how was jim Jim's demeanor that night. You know, Dad was always pretty confident, man. Uh, you know, I was thinking about before we came on, uh, 
I don't think any team out prepared us ever. I think the players were very prepared for every game that we went into. And, you know, players know my dad, but he was very calm, very confident. And I think that rubbed off on the team. Uh, he never got too high or too low. And I think you saw that in the locker room. I think they showed a live view of our, our locker room and their locker room before we went out on the field. And ours was very, everybody was sitting down, relaxed. And uh, I think he took on the, the team took on his mentality. It just yeah. seems that, and I have a video of him, which we're going to show later, where he, there's John, thank God. Mr. Wilson back in. Uh, well, it just see, seems like I'm just waiting for him to appear. It Is John seems, Williams in? Yep, he's in, he's in. Ladies okay, and gentlemen, I'll get ready to send him the link again. Hello, there, Mr. Williams. John Williams, sir, yeah. how are you? Perfect it timing. Is well. uh, hey. Would you say, say what you said about Mr. Williams? Oh, shut up. There, he is not here. Would you like to, <laughs> you like to say your, your bad thing about him, saying that he could let, let me tell you something. I spent day and night, as a matter of fact, from uh, Friday night all the way till Sunday morning editing all this stuff, putting stuff together, making sure the show is going to look good. Uh, I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, yeah, you well. gave me the memories that I didn't have when I was growing up. You were the reason, you guys, and the rest of the league were the reason why I believed in myself. Because when I saw the USFL go up against the NFL, when everybody said, oh, my God, you shouldn't do that, and you guys had the balls and the management had the balls, uh, let's be honest, we were spending money to go out there and get the best players and quality product, okay? I believed in myself because of that, and that's the truth. I believed in myself because I said, if that's possible, anything I can do is possible. And so I was a, I was a fan then, I'm a fan now. And so when I tell you I spend hours editing this stuff, it's because it's my passion, my love, and I enjoy this league. And I appreciate every single one of you. And I just want to say thank you because it's my only opportunity to tell you, okay? Uh, your work was not in vain. Your work made a difference. And, Frank, uh, Go ahead. Thank you for no, having us on, man. Yeah, thank you for those kind words, bud. And and I'm going to tell you, and we could always look back, and we are talking about the good old days, and you are absolutely right. I tell people, this is the last league that will ever give NFL any run for its money. And we were mm -hmm. that league. We were the players, and, and they know that. I mean, it's uh, what it could have, should have, like John said earlier in the beginning of the show. Uh, it's uh, it, – couple mistakes here and there but i'll tell you it, we came very very close to making it and um but that's uh that's the water under the bridge these days so listen i, I got a bone to pick with you novo today oh, yeah, tonight. Right. i got a I bone to I pick with it, you <laughs> i can mute frank watch this guys i can first mute frankie's mic at any time frankie can't talk so let him have his fit oh my god just i was getting ready to ask are you going to be nice now frankie are you going to be nice to our guests? Are you sure? Because I will unmute your mic if you're going to be nice. Because the next question is this. We have it from a fan. Jeff Jeff Farmer says, I wish the original USFL would have stayed in the spring. I think the real USFL and the real Michigan Panthers would still be around. What is your guys' take on that? There's Mr. Williams. And let's start with Mr. Williams first on that one. Because I want to hear what his take is on the new USFL. And this question, give it a minute. And we need to get Bobby A. Bear back because we do. All right, Mr. Williams, you there? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. All right. So, question from Speak John. Up, John. Yes, he goes, I, "I wish the original." Okay, he goes, "I wish the original USFL had stayed in the spring. I think the real USFL and the real Michigan Panthers would still be around." So, I have two questions for you. That one, and then what is? Let's start with what's your take on the new USFL? It's not us. Um, okay. We, we had starters that, that were in the NFL come down and play in the USFL. Um, we had, like, our whole offense played on NFL teams when the league dispersed. So the difference is, I think, night and day. All right. And do you think that... So here he says that he wishes that you – so do you think that the original USFL should have stayed in the spring? And if it did, do you guys think you would still be around? 
Bobby's back. I see it. We should have stayed in the spring. Uh, that was that was good for me. I like hotter play for hotter weather. Okay. All right. There you go. All right, uh, Matt, what, what's your take on it? So I really think the original USFL, the first year in 83, was 12 teams, if you'll recall. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened is if we stuck with those original 12 teams, we've been a lot better off long term and not expanded. We expanded, I believe, to, what, 18 the next year? Correct. And I think we expanded too quickly. But I don't think there's any question that, you know, uh, we we had the talent like like John Williams just said you know three of our offensive linemen came from the Pittsburgh Steelers had what six Super Bowl rings around us we had a lot of NFL starters that came and joined us on the Panthers team um, and I think it's I think it would have eventually this is my opinion I think it would have been like the AFL that merged with you know uh, the Jets and all that I think there would have been teams eventually that would have merged into the, the NFL I sure do okay uh, Novo. Well, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, so uh, I look at I look at if we did stay in the spring, and I and I I talk about this all the time. Uh, if we could have left, you know, kind of played another three, four, five years and uh, build on a on a crowd, and uh, the audience was getting much better, the players. And one thing is, what a lot of people don't understand at that time, USFL was paying just as good of money to the players that, like NFL. I mean, that's the reason we also got a lot of NFL players jumping the league. And, you know, I was making more money in USFL than I did with St. Louis Cardinals. So, it, you know, if anything, NFL should be thanking USFL, the league, for all the millions of dollars they're getting paid these days because we kind of push the envelope. Okay. Mr. Captain America, John Coker. Hey. Hey, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, if we had stayed in that springtime football, football. I, don't, I don't know if I got the numbers from the little but but uh, I think the NFL, the USFL stadiums uh, were around, right around 35, 42,000 uh, per stadium on average. And, and with that kind of uh, viewership, uh, you pretty much had the, the things in place that it took to, to, to continue that lead. And so with the money that they were paying, uh, if you notice, uh, that USFL started out with quite a few bucks for the guys, but that next year they kind of leveled it off. They leveled it off a little bit because they, they they began to see the opportunity of the future that was at hand. And I don't know where the idea came from. Uh, I know this guy in, in New, New Orleans down there with Bobby, uh, I think his name was David Dixon. I mean, he, he pitched a tent. Uh, when when Donald Trump had made it made it known that he wanted to go head to head the following year in the uh, against the NFL, and this guy uh, David Dixon uh, David Dixon said, "Hey man, let's not do that. You know, let's stay here." But uh, Trump was able to get all these other guys on board to go up and challenge the NFL, and uh, and after having it turn out the way it turned out, it wasn't a good move for us, you know, but. If we had stayed in that in that time, time, in that time, time that, uh, uh, this league would still be going on. Today. I don't have a doubt about that. All right, Mr. Holloway, same thing. Do you think you guys should have stayed in the spring, or you guys, would you guys still be around? Yes, of course. I think we should have stayed in the spring, and just like Matt said, um, the least thing I think would have happened is they would have merged some teams. Because you look at what the NFL has now. Um, they didn't have a team in Oakland. There was a team in Oakland. They now have a team in Oakland. Well, they don't have a team in Oakland. Well, yeah, they do have a team in Oakland. Um, but Memphis, they have a team in Memphis now. We had a team in Memphis. Uh, they put Tennessee Titans. There was a team in Jacksonville. Now they got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Baltimore had left. So now they have a team in Baltimore. So we, there was about four or five different teams that probably could have merged into the um, NFL. Uh, we might have even ran the Lions out of, out of Detroit. You know, so uh, with the Michigan Panthers, you know, we, we, we might have did that. And we could have been, been that um, NFL team. But um, I still, once again, answer the question. I think we should have stayed in the spring. The whole, as far as I know, the whole plan of the league was to play at least five years in the spring and then reevaluate. So we only played three. 
and they were talking about i think moving the leg after two years um to the fall but um i think we should have stayed in the spring i think we still be playing the usfl will still be real strong and they'd be looking good you guys all say that you just made frankie's day because frankie has always said you guys should have stayed in the spring he said you guys it would have lasted and all of that now frankie i know you're itching to play the video i know you're itching i got a bunch of videos if you stop talking jesus listen, christ i no. listen you're supposed to be a host i i don't see you taking tro i do got one question though for you guys a lot of rock locker room you guys are in the locker rooms together right I mean, what's one of the craziest things that happened in the locker room? Was there like a lot of towels slapping or Yes, that's it's all funny. I told you, Mr. Williams. It's like that. Oh, you, hear no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me, Mr. Williams? Listen, we we need to talk oh. about. Remember, remember, was talking about Bobby and his speech. Yep. This is the first time in all times we huddled up. Bobby Dixon told everybody. Oh. And that <laughs> we lost him. Do you guys know what story he was talking about? The joys of live tele the joys of broadcasting live, Frankie. Yes, well Frankie, right now. Frankie, That's my turn. Frankie, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, guys. I, you know my English was not the best at that time, but thank God Bobby was on a team because he made me feel good because you know, <laughs> he was this guy blue, you know, he had a head. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can understand oh, yeah, Bobby. Bobby Bobby was something else, boy. Right. All right, Mr. Williams is back. I want to hear what he said. All right, sir. <laughs> Finish your story, sir. Okay. Okay. So, so the running back coach told everybody to stop. How many of you guys understood what was taught? Only five of us raised our hands that understood what Bobby was saying. <laughs> Didn't he have trouble saying the word snake? Yeah, <laughs> was it was it the word snake? snake. Yeah, snake. On the no, blitz, no. Bobby. On the blitz, Bobby's supposed to say no, snake. It was the, play. The, play it the running back would come over and pick up the blitz, and we missed it. And Dad was like, "What the heck's going on?" He's like, "We can't understand him. He's saying nay, nay. He's supposed to say snake." <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that, <laughs> happened, that happened in practice. We were trying to practice. It was supposed to be the strong safety blitz, and Bobby was supposed to say, say snake. snake. So we get on the line, he says, you know, blue 32, blue 32. Nay, nay. No, hold up, hold up, time out, Bobby. Hold up, time out, Bobby. The word's not nake, the word is snake. So we tried it again, he said nake again. So we had to change the whole word. Because Bobby couldn't say the word snake. <laughs> and sadly, he's got technical issues, so he's. I'm, we're trying to bring him back on because whatever. Yeah, he said off. something was wrong with his volume. He texted me and said something about the volume. Well, we're trying to get, to, to get him on. Again. But Mr. Williams, before your phone dies on you, yes. I need to show you this because I edited this last night and found it. And Novo, I still have a bone to pick with I you. I haven't forgotten. Leave Novo alone before I mute uh, you. I can go. I'm gonna mute Here we your go, Mr. Williams. This is two quick highlights that I want to show. Listen to what the commentator says about you. Oh, great! See, Frankie, you had to you had to jaw jack too much. Okay. You had to jaw jack too much. Novo, I'm gonna start with you now. Uh, wait till Mr. Williams comes back. This. Right. What was the record? Everybody remember the the kicking record, the field goal kicking record. Uh, in the NFL, that was supposed to be a pro football record. What was it? 62 yards. It was 63. 63. 63. And and 
that record held till when? Oh boy, that held. That was cool until uh, probably ten years ago. Not true. No. Yep. Watch this video, everybody. NFL, you're full of crap. That is Novo Bjovic from Tidograd, Yugoslavia. This will be a 56-yarder. It's a prayer, but he has the distance. exactly right. Ricky Ray and Novo had an altercation there. It nearly caused a major fight. Eight consecutive field goals. That one was shot from a cannon. Now you notice Novo's your always been a shit starter. <laughs> no, hold on. Hold on. You notice yeah, your, no teammates, your teammates were upset at you, but the guy that shook your hand was the opposing team, Jim Smith. Jim Smith, and I'm going to tell you, he's a first class. I will never forget that. He's a University of Michigan receiver. So, obviously, he was a veteran, played in NFL, then he came in and just basically wanted to. What happened, What happened, Frankie, with a lot of people don't want to talk about, I was set up on a kickoff, and I don't know if this, uh, my teammates remember when I on a kickoff, opening kickoff, Raleigh Dodge wanted to set me up. He wanted to take me out, and this is a fact, true. Uh, and so he got me on the on the kickoff. As I was approaching the kickoff, they send the linebacker, and I think it was Jimmy Ray, and he just took me down like a dummy. And it was pretty good hit, but I took it. And so when that field goal, when I kicked that field goal, it was kind of basically right back in his face, and that's what started the whole thing. Okay, but you did it in Oakland too, because I've seen videos of you. Oh, I did it. Oh, I did a lot of places. He did it often. He did it often. (laughs) Yes. And everybody would have to run to his rescue. (laughs) Yes. But here's my bone that I have to pick with you. Break it, break it, break it. I I have a bone to pick with you. This game. Frankie, I got JC. When I got when I had JC on my team, I did not worry about anybody else. (laughs) This game that you were playing in. Uh, it was 33 nothing Michigan Panthers over the Tampa Bay Bandits. And you ended up doing this. It's bad enough you did it, and then on top of that, you recovered the ball. kick on top of that yeah Look, you do not like steve spurrier i'll we say not like steve spurrier hold on thank god they did it against steve spurrier he's no, a that's wrong. piece of trash i can't stand steve spurrier at oh. all he's hey, over- hey, hey, hey frankie 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 listen listen we did not have any love for the other guys there were no <laughs> hugging, there were no hugging and shaking it was all about winning okay well, I still say 33 nothing is over. Okay? okay. That's it. Frankie's getting muted. I don't understand why we're picking on these guys. They're professional. You guys are professional athletes. Your job is to go out there and win. Am I correct, gentlemen? 100%. Yep. Listen, I got to show a video. Of- I'm, I'm muting you yeah. again. It's that you have to keep your foot on the pedal at all time to win. Correct, gentlemen? 100%. See? See? But you got to win with class, though. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, oh, oh there it is. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, can we get John back and Bobby back? I have important there. videos to show. Frankie, um, they're trying. There's John. All right, John, are you there? Technical difficulties. Uh, give me he, one because this is a, a, a video I want him to see. But go ahead with the question. Look, have a question. And, uh, of course, it's from John Turner, who types a damn fucking paragraph to Mongo. Just do the, the clip it notes. Says, uh, did you guys like the idea of the draft happening the first weekend in January, right after college season ending, better than 
the NFL draft in April. What was your guys' take on that? I tell you, with the, with the draft, with the draft being able to start like that, that basically gave us a jump start. Good start, because you look back over the years uh, when they had a chance to get Elway and Marino in the league. Uh, that was that was part of the reason why those guys kind of like, hey man, leave the door open because the USFL is going to get the first shot at them, and uh, with Elway and Marino, and and. Uh, and so they they pitch they pitch both of those guys, man. So so having an opportunity to get first dibs on those athletes in the earlier part of the year, it was a it was a blessing for the USFL. Okay, uh, let's go with Matt. Matt, what do you what did you, what was your take? Did you like the idea of the draft being the first of the uh, right after January in the beginning of January? Right. Yeah, I think, I think John's right. I think it helped the players too. And, you know, going back just for the USFL, like Noble said earlier, you know, the USFL was great for the football players, coaches, um, because it gave them other avenues. Like, like Noble said, I believe earlier, you know, uh, these Pittsburgh Steelers offensive linemen, we got made more money with Michigan. Uh, they weren't paying the players in the NFL like they are today. And the reason why is because of the USFL in those days. And I think having to draft that early is good for the players. You know, gives them more choices, more options. Okay. Uh, let's go. We'll go to we'll go to Novo. Novo? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, exactly what John and Matt said. I mean, it's like, really, we got a first shot that, uh, at the grace uh, athletes coming out of college. So, you know, it was awesome for our league. And uh, like I said, uh, and not only that, but, you know, a lot of people also, I kind of look back, and I think our coaching staff, the, even the scouts, did a great job picking the players. And you got one, John Williams uh, from Wisconsin, that we had Dave Greenwood. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and really, they, they, you got uh, you got Holloway out of Arkansas. And, I mean, so so many great athletes that came into our league, and uh, and they were discovered. They were drafted in USFL. So I, I kind of look at it. We we really did a great job also picking some great athletes coming out of college and some of the guys that played in the pros that joined the USFL and went back to the NFL again. So great athletes, Mister uh, Mister Holloway. Your your take? Did you like the draft being right after uh, college football and right before April in for the NFL? Well, well, we had to have the draft because we actually were playing earlier. Yep. So they had to have the draft earlier in order to get those those type players. And like um, Noble was saying, you know, we, we put together, uh, well, the Michigan Panthers, Coach Stanley and his staff, they put together a hell of a team. Um, you know, I was drafted, like, I think in the 20-something round, 200 and some player pick. Like, I was picked way down there somewhere, you know. And we had on Michigan, we had a we had a mix of young players and a mix of older players. Our whole basically our whole offense were, were all rookies. Me, Bobby, John, AC, uh, Ken Lacey. We were all rookies. But then on the defense, we had a lot of we had a lot of um, veterans on defense. And then our offensive line, obviously, you've been talking about. We had a lot of veterans on our offensive line. So we had a mix of, of younger guys and mix of older guys. And, and it worked. You know, it worked very well. Obviously, we won that first championship, and um, so it, it worked real well for us. All right, now Bobby back. Let's see if we get him back because I—I I mean, I'm guys. Listen, I'm gonna throw all of all five of you under the bus. You guys have been bad mouthing this guy, saying oh, that I can't goodness. talk, Mister Mister A. Not hear anything. Uh, uh, we're bad mouthing to his face. We don't have to wait till he's not on here. Over there, sir. <laughs> can you hear us, Bobby? We can hear him. I can well, see y'all, but I can't hear anything. Yeah, he's a turn his volume. Something, Bobby. No, we can hear him. Yeah, we can hear you, Bobby. We can oh, okay. hear you. Damn, I turn. Freaking yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> can you turn on your computer and listen to the show there? <laughs> no, they don't get the feedback. All the way up. I don't know what's wrong, Derek. Well, we can hear you though. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let me let me let me show this game-winning touchdown that he did. 
Okay, show the game money touchdown. Two, I know three, you are. This, five, is a, this is the iconic video <laughs> from the USFL that everybody remembers. Even if you only watched a couple of games. Watch. Lush comes up, shows blitz, and he's coming. Heats on. Hebert gets it away. Carter's there. First down. He's loose. He's got some help. He's going for the corner. Touchdown. Whoa! Now you would think by the expression on Jim Stanley's face that you saw there, Philadelphia it's cool. That it was a fourth down play and they lost the ball. You see, Matt, what I'm talking about? <laughs> Do you see? He's like a deer in the headlights. Every time you guys score, he acts like there's so, no so I, I, asked him, down, but... I asked him about that one time. And I so said, he's I, heard the touchdown. I asked him about that one time, and I said, why Why is that? He said, because I'm already thinking about the next play. I don't have time to be That's a cheerleader. Right. Right. I'm thinking about – I'm ahead of him. So he's thinking about the kickoff on the next play. He, you know, That's why, you know, the camera shows him like a stoic face. But I asked him, he said, because I'm thinking about the next play. Because how much time? What do we need to do on the kickoff? And, uh, Bobby, can you hear us now? No? Yeah, I, hey, I could definitely attest to that, what, what Matt is saying. And, you know, you looked at Coach Stanley – and you would think that, hey, man, just relax a little bit. Just show us a smile. He's like, John, we got the next play. And, and you know, that, that mentality stuck with me because I was like, man, you know, you made a good play, but guess what? You got to go back out on the field and you got to do it again. <laughs> uh, Bobby, can you hear us? We can hear him. Okay. Yeah. And I want Matt, as a matter of fact, that this play was always not because we that play basically uh, took us to the championship and won a championship for us. It's one of the greatest plays. But what I remember, and I wish Bobby, Mike is working. Because, uh, Hold on. So I know he can hear us, right? So here's what I'm going to tell you, Bobby. Go, go, into, go into your settings. And then you will go to where it, you'll be in your uh, you'll be at your microphone and all that stuff. And then click where it says you'll see where it says your speech. Should say your speakers and check there and have it through your headset or your phone. And that then you should be able to hear us. In so the meantime, while he's doing that, guys, John, this one is for you. <laughs> for Kelly, and the reason is he's thrown into coverage here. Corker is a great blitzer, but he's also very quick, and he gets back in coverage. Look at him, the left corner of your screen, number 57. Kelly sees the coverage. Now, that man's coverage. Got a man behind him. That would have been almost an impossible pass to complete, and you can see he didn't complete it. Corker gets his hand up. He's a big guy making the interception. All USFL Defensive Player of the Year last year, John Corker from Michigan. You remember that? Man, I was a freak! <laughs> six foot six. Yeah, I like. six foot six. And I, didn't, I only had to go five yards and I could cover 15 out there. That's what made me so versatile out there, man. I was a beast. I could oh, drop in oh, that flat can... about five to seven yards standing six foot six tall. Let me tell you, that gave a quarterback hell trying to get over the top of that. And my, yeah. and my quarterbacks loved it. What'd you tell Jim Kelly? What'd you tell Jim Kelly? Hey, I told Kelly that I was coming to see him, and when they ran that run and shoot, and we was going to blitz him, and we was going to bring our linebackers, I say, brother, let me tell you something. If you do happen to get it off, the first guy on the tackle, don't make the tackle. Just hold him up so we can hit one of them little guys. And when we got there, we dislodged about three balls in that game. <laughs> hey, Kelly didn't want to see the Michigan Panther defense. He didn't. I tell you, because we put we put him through hell. He 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 pounded the other teams, but when it came to Michigan, we had blitzes. We had blitzes that did, that did, that got home with him, and he remembers that too. Both times we played him. Um, quickly, uh, Mr. Aber, can you hear me, Bobby? 
I don't know if he can. Okay. John, can you hear me? Yes. All right, John, this one's for you, okay? I, I, I actually fi- right. found this last night and finished, and this one's for you. Listen to what the commentator says. <laughs> Big hole for John Williams. Look out, he may go. He goes right into the corner and scores a touchdown for Michigan. John Williams, the rookie out of Wisconsin, blasts it in from 15 yards out. Williams will get on the guard's hip. You watch the right guard, number 63, right there. That's Thornbrook. He makes a break. Kimball can't catch him. It's a touchdown for the Wisconsin graduate. You know, you made a very good point about John Williams' contribution to this oh. Panther team earlier, and I think it's well taken. He's gotten 67 yards today. Score. They've, they've been 9-2 and two since he's a starter. And, Novo, you missed that kick. But, <laughs> Mr. Oh, <no>. John, <laughs> John oh, that was for you. That was for you because I think, yes, in yes. my opinion, uh, you were the workhorse in that backfield for the Michigan Panthers. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for the years that you you played for them. Uh, I remember you. You were just a war. I've seen video after video about you, and you were the workhorse in that backfield. Uh, I know Ken Lacey got a lot of the accolades, but you didn't get enough credit for the first downs and the and the short yardage well, touchdowns you scored. And I wanted to show you that well, because you. the announcer said you were nine and two uh, with you in in the lineup. That same game that you showed, uh, John intercepting Jim Kelly. John went about 68 yards that same game uh, on Ray Penny uh, pull. He went about 68 yards. That remember that, John? Same yes, game. sir. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have one two for one. Just uh, another one that I edited last night. And this one's uh, Mr. Holloway and Mr. Williams. I believe Mr. Holloway didn't get enough credit when AC went down. Um, because w- when AC went down 84, a lot of the workload went to went to Holloway. He didn't get enough credit, guys, for the work that he put in. And if you see some of the touchdowns, some of the catches, I was just impressed with him. But let me show you what I'm talking about. And this was uh, another game. 46-yard line of Oakland, first down. First time Michigan's been on the Oakland side of the field, and Abair on first down. Puts it up over the middle for Holloway. Down at the six. Derek Holloway, the last time these two teams met, caught three touchdown passes, even though his team lost, and he almost got another one here against the Oakland secondary. Good post pattern. First and goal to go, Michigan, a 40 yard pass play. Holloway on the stands, 5'7, weighs 165 pounds, but he's tough. Played at Arkansas. Give it away to Williams and John Williams. John Williams, great execution of the run. See, and that's what I feel that made Michigan great on offense. Not only on defense, but offense. You had Bobby who understood where he had to go, where his assignments were. And then you had Mr. Holloway giving, you know, uh, getting the long bombs. And then John coming in with the short with the short short yardage uh, uh, work that he needed to do, whether it was a first down or touchdown. So for me, um, that's what made the Michigan Panthers unique. You know, where the, every other team was a little bit different. Uh, well, you were just reaching for a hug, Frankie. Reaching for a hug. I'm trying to get Bobby so in there so he can I see. am. He's right here. Let's see if we can hear him again. All right, let's see if we can get him back. Hold on, and then we got John coming back. Let's see. Nope, it looks like Bobby froze. John's still there. Let's get John back. John, are you there? Okay, Bobby froze. All right, so here's the question I I got. Wait, who was that? Was that Bobby? John. John? John. Okay, okay. All right, I'm trying to figure out. All right, so here we go. I got the question. It said, would you guys say that the bond was created with the USFL was closer than the NFL since you guys were in uncharted territories? That's from John Turner. Well, I'll jump on that. Uh, let me tell you. Now, our coming out party was the USFL. 
uh, I thought that uh, for one one reason or another, I didn't have the opportunities because, you know, you face it. I go to the Houston Oilers, a team that has Robert Brazil, six-year, all-perennial, all-pro, uh, Teddy Washington, uh, Teddy Washington, 15-year veteran, uh, Gary Bing, uh, Bingham inside, 15-year veteran. So I, I didn't really expect to get much playing time. So when the opportunity came to to jump league and go to the USFL and be with Coach Stanley, man, that was that was my blessing. You know, that was my coming out party. And, and I really, I'm so thankful of that because I, I got a chance to display my talents out on the football field, which I had not been afforded in the uh, NFL at that particular time. All right, John, but let me ask you all of you, okay? It, you're you're not gonna let the other three guys answer the finish answer the question, oh, Frankie. Right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Jesus, Matt, do you feel that the bond was closer than the NFL because of you guys were in the uncharted territory? You know, you said what made this team different, in my opinion. And these guys can agree or disagree, I guess. But to me, the Panthers were more like a college team in the in the area that they were they were family. Like I get in the hole with any of these guys. You know, Fox told any of these guys, and, and they were family. They really cared about each other. And you don't see that in the NFL like you did on this team. And, John, you played, you know, NFL, Derek, all y'all played in the NFL too. But I think that there was a, a special bond on this team. Like Derek said, you know, mostly we had a lot of a lot of rookies. We had some veterans. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, this team was like family. And you see that in college, not so much in the NFL. And okay. I think that's what made this team special, that they really loved each other and they really cared about each other. And I think it's a testament today that we could all come together like this. No. Hey, hey man, I tell you, I mean, it's not just uh, because of your dad being our coach. And Jim Stanley really created this whole bond. And Matt is spot on. We were like a family any time in that locker room when we came and took that field. I mean, it, it was we were ready to play i mean and we took that field and like i said to us it was about supporting each other we love each other no matter if we won lost we you know we were behind each other but the thing is the bond that we had for those two years matt is absolutely right we were the closest to more of a college type of because of the mom his mom and and coach stanley got us to really believe in each other, love each other, support each other. And he did not want any uh, porch dogs. <laughs> one thing, one thing, Coach Stanley did not want any porch dogs. Oh, yeah. He don't he want no dogs that won't hunt. No, no dogs that won't hunt. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, hey, Matt, hey, Matt, can you put them four fingers together, man? Matt, <laughs> put some hay in the bar. <laughs> I don't want y'all hanging out with that great coyote. <laughs> uh, Mr. Howard, can, you, uh, can you answer that quick uh, question? You, 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 you go to bed with dogs, you wake up with fleas. <laughs> I, I, had, I had dogged up for a second. What was the question? So the, the question was, is, do you guys feel that the USFL created a closer bond than the NFL since you guys were in uncharted territories? Yeah, of course. You know, everything everyone said is, 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 is true. You know, and, and Coach Stanley always used to tell us, you know, uh, no, um, no. Oh, here come them shoe clerks. Yeah, we used yeah. to call the front office people shoe clerks all the time. <laughs> like the general managers, anyone that worked in the front office was a shoe clerk. <laughs> <laughs> but real quick, I do. But, have, um, I we have were, a question for Frankie. I have a question for Frankie, guys. Oh, Did you guys God. notice how he reached and he he gave the hug to Steve Spurrier, right? But have you guys seen him give your guys his coach any love? Man, have you seen him give your dad any love oh, to, to the no. past? Have you guys seen like, him like, give like, like Derek, Derek said earlier, Derek said earlier you went with class, right? But yeah. there's two coaches, George Allen and Steve Spurrier. Those are the two we're going to come after every time. See, Frankie? Yeah. But yet, Frankie, um, I love Steve Spurrier. Listen, <laughs> let John Willings in the room. Hey, I got hey Frankie, tell him. Hey, Frankie, Spurrier. tell him you got Stan on here. First, Steve Spurrier's not on here. And Steve Spurrier it's, probably won't be invited listen, from the Tampa it's Bay Band. <laughs> would you agree? Would you agree that John Madden, Hall of Fame coach, and Pat Summerall 
a Hall of Fame broadcaster, have a lot of clout when they were live, when they talked about players, other leagues, whatever. When it came to football, they had a lot of clout and they had a lot of credibility. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Here's why I say that. Because on my USFL Forever YouTube channel, I get comments 10, 15 a day. And once in a while, I get these NFL marks that come around. But what the, these NFL marks don't understand and forget that the USFL changed the NFL landscape. Why? Because the minimum salaries raised. Oh, you got the two-point conversion from us. Oh, wait a minute. Instant replay came from us. Oh, wait a minute. Also, under two minutes, the clock stops on each half after first down. Where did they get that from? Hmm, I wonder why. Where? Uh, yeah. Now, I we said about... Uh, uh, Madden and Summerall being very credible. We all agree, right? Yeah. So to you, NFL marks, and I wish Bobby was back on, on here because it was the USFL that made the New Orleans Saints relevant because they they made the playoffs for the first time in 1986 with USFL players. You're welcome, New Orleans. <laughs> Uh, also, uh, Washington Redskins won the Super Bowl. Hey, whoa, whoa. Woo, boo, boo. You can't say it. Washington Commanders, it's all there the you same. Go. You got to be politically correct there, uh, Frankie. Well, the I'm going to screw the Commanders, man. But here is for <laughs> the NFL Marks. <laughs> for you, NFL Marks, and for everybody <laughs> who makes comments on my on my YouTube channel that all oh, USFL was AAA. You guys want to see him get a look at <laughs> I just... This is their first appearance. They really got a shot in the arm when the USFL folded and they started to pick up some of the good players. You know, I think both teams did. If you look at the Saints, Bobby A. Bear, of course, the starting quarterback was from the USFL. Mel Gray, Chuck Comiskey, the starting fullback. Vaughn Johnson, Van Jake, Sam Mills is in the Pro Bowl. All of these guys came to the Saints after the USFL. It really had an impact. And we talked about the Saints and the contribution that the USFL players made to their team. What about the Vikings? Look at that. I mean, if you just take that top guy, Anthony Carter, and say that's the only thing you got out of the league, that was pretty good. But look, they got Keith Millard, who's a second team All Pro. And down at the bottom there was Gary Zimmerman, right? He's an all pro this year. And perhaps their best lineman. Take that and smoke NFL marks. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Did I make my point? <laughs> yes. I mean, no Go question. Ahead, dirty. No uh, question. I mean, I'm just I'm just watching you reach for the hug. I just think it's amazing how all we just said nothing but just say, oh. This is so, so much work. I'm getting so nervous. And, uh, uh, I'm getting Don't so listen nervous. to this guy. He doesn't do anything. You know? So, yeah, I mean, here, guys. I mean, that is an honor if you guys really think about it. And you're right. What what the USFL did. I mean, I was still a little too young for the USFL. I mean, I was only in, in 83 when you guys started. I think I was like eight years old. Not even. Maybe six or whatever. But, I mean, what, what you guys did is you guys really changed the landscape of football. So with that being said, and I don't care. I mean, we could start with, you know, we'll start with uh, Matt because, you know, his dad kind of changed the game that the game was coached and all that. And you guys changed the game the way the game was played. Like, what, what, was, what does that mean that you guys left that everlasting mark on the NFL and to make the NFL change in coaching and in players' way? Matt, go first. Well, it's like I, I think I said earlier. I mean, I think it was great for the fans. They got to see football year-round, right? It was great for the players because now they weren't getting paid that much in the NFL back then. And for coaches, they provided more jobs. Um, as far as the landscaping, I think the NFL stood for not for fun at the time. Uh, and so I think you saw celebrations. I think you saw two point conversions, like you said. Um, I think it changed a little bit of the NFL uh, personality from the USFL. Um, and like I said, our league, as we said earlier, we, we were a different league. And uh, we competed with, we could compete with the NFL, many teams, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I hate to get in this comparison, but, you know, had we played the Lions, who would have won? You know? But I think just having that conversation uh, kind of tells you the, the caliber of league that, that we were in. Let's go, Mr. Holloway. Uh, I'm going to basically say the same thing Matt did. You know, the, it, it changed the landscape of everything. The NFL had to 
uh, even though they didn't like us, they had to respect us. Um, for those three years, we were, you know, we we got players from the NFL. Um, we had a lot of young kids um, you know, that came up through the um, through the USFL. So they they really had no other choice. So you know, it changed the landscape a lot, and they they had to respect us, even though they didn't like us. And I'm going to go to Mr. Captain America, John, first, because you know kickers are people too, Frankie. And even though you don't like kickers. Kickers are people too, so we're going to double for the lap. <laughs> Frank, I know yeah, we are nice. with oh, nothing. Man, we are nice, Frank. <laughs> like, like, Noble's just an excitable boy. <laughs> <laughs> like That's the video. Remember the video? Oh, <laughs> just I an excitable boy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Coker, how do you feel about how you guys changed the way football is played today? Well, you know, being able to see all of that activity that was going on in the USFL – the NFL already having a stronghold politically, bureaucratically, all across the board. Uh, so even when the suit went down and we win the suit, uh, everything still gets washed up under the rug. And that's just the power that they had. So, I, But I really do believe things would have eventually changed itself and turned itself around, but we, you would have had to stand the, uh, the test of time, okay? And what, what we did in those first three seasons, man, let people know what they can look forward to as athletes. And we jump-started a lot of things that, that's even going on today. You know, having fun out there. Because I'm going to tell you, man, training camp and, and going through a season, bro, that ain't fun. <laughs> but the, the, the camaraderie with the players, the winning attitude, and uh, being up for one another, that's fun. And, and uh, I'll tell you, you know, and Matt, Matt only tipped the iceberg on it. But, man, let me tell you, his dad, his dad orchestrated that team, man. Oh, my God, man. I, let me tell you, he orchestrated that team to where it had been. We were kind of like, we were expected to jump out and probably run the table in that first season. That's how good we knew that we were. So for us to start off one and four, it was kind of like the Lakers not making the playoffs this year. <laughs> no. but, hey, so yeah, we had expe expectations out the gazoo. And, you know, we were supposed to win that championship from the first game of the season, let me tell you, because we had the best team. Nobody practiced as hard as we did. Nobody prepared better than we did, and it just didn't go right those first five weeks, you know. And so having that all get back on board, being orchestrated by Coach Stanley, man, it was it was ever sent, bro. We, right, just, now, we just had to see it through. Steve Novo, here's why I had you go last, you know, because uh, uh, all the, the entire show, there's been a pattern, if you haven't seen, that you are the shit disturber. So this is your chance to, dis to to stir shit up of why you, you – what the change that you guys did for the way football is. Well, you know, I mean, this is great listening to everybody. But, you know, one thing about USFL, I got to tell you, I mean, from the two-point conversion, a lot of changes, excitement. Like Matt said, we brought in excitement. And not just from the play perspective. When you look at that, really, even the Jim Kelly and the Houston Gamblers, I mean, their offense, their run-and-shoot offense, I mean, it, it was exciting. And I don't remember NFL running any type of run-and-shoot offense, but I guess it's very popular these days, right? So it started mm -hmm. with Miles Davis. And uh, but anyhow, and if, if you really look at even our uniforms were exciting, uh, you know, I mean, it's like Michigan Panthers. Let's put it this way. To this day, still people talk about Michigan Panthers being one of the uh, greatest looking uniforms that they ever seen. And even when I was with St. Louis Cardinals, all the Cardinal uh, players, they were all like uh, talk about the Michigan Panther, our uniform. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we did bring a lot of excitement from the play perspective, from uh, we changed the game a little bit, but the fans went into it. We did uh, throw the ball a lot. Uh, we had exciting uh, receivers in Holloway and AC. And uh, yeah, I mean, we we, we brought the excitement in Silver Dome, so. You hey, were no good. Vote. You were hey, no right. Vote. Yes, no sir. Vote. Don't uh -oh. forget, <laughs> no vote. Don't forget, 
Hey, I got a question. Oh, hey, I got a statement for you, Novo. Hey, I don't forget like about. Don't forget then. about the. Ch hey, Novo, don't forget about the cheerleaders. Oh yeah, whoa, no, no, don't forget. Who is this guy? Seriously, don't forget about the cheerleaders, Novo. Hey, There's the best trophy I got from the Panthers. I understand, <laughs> man. <laughs> Oh yeah, don't let me don't don't let me put Linda. Oh man, Linda's still looking good. <laughs> Hold on. Chris Mason here says Sackman is lad legendary. Uh he says, I love you, Sackman. Uh Chris also says, Novo, you get to get you need to be back with the Panthers because they're they're not really doing too good. And they're and they're really not. Uh they do have a they do have a terrible head coach in Jeff Fisher. Um, he was terrible in Tennessee. He was terrible in New Orleans, and he was terrible with the Lambs before they left. You be quiet, Frank. You don't say another word. No, I got something to show, Matt. Uh, this one's a funny one uh, because this was a crazy play, and I don't know what the hell happened. But I don't know. All I know is what Jim Simpson said made me laugh. Okay? It got to be the Birmingham game. Yes, as, <laughs> as Fred Logan was, was J -C, J -C it, was running around showed, talking about. He was down. I remember that play. JC reversed the call. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> if they can get within range in this last 57 seconds. Lane has time. Goes down the sidelines. Look out. The ball is broken up on a fine play by Logan. And they say he's got it. Wait a minute. He threw the ball away. They didn't throw the ball away. And, and Mason throws on it. And the whistle blown. Touchdown. Logan threw it away in the end zone. And Mason picks it up. What a boner. What a boner! All right, let's take a look at it. Bob Lane goes down. It goes out. It throws the ball deep. Now, Logan's going to make the interception right here. Take a look at Logan. He is not touched by anyone. His feet are not out of bounds. He can get up. The official marks the ball at the one-yard line. He's up. Now he's running around the end zone. He is still alive with the ball. But look at him chasing there. There's a man trying, Frederick, it looked like, trying to make the tackle, realizing what was going on. No, oh, no. look, they changed it. Is that crazy or what? Yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna tell you something, guys. He was down. Look at that foot. He got when he got that pass. When he got that, you uh, know, I mean, interception. When you look at that foot, that shoulder pad got that foot of that receiver. He was down. But the was funny right. thing is, what Jim Simpson said, Matt. What a boner. What a boner. <laughs> you can't get away with I heard that. that. <laughs> Only Jim Simpson could get away with that. I'll, I'll say this. If we stood up right now, I guarantee he'd have a boner with you guys all on the show right now. I mean, I haven't seen Frankie smiling ear to ear in, you know, seven to eight weeks that we've been doing this show. Garrett, so Frankie, please do not stand up because nobody wants to see that. Am I? Can we all agree to that? We don't. I apologize, guys. Yeah, guys. You know, don't, don't. Don't. But listen, Matt. Uh, again, it's just the reaction of Jim. That's what gets me. Like he's in, he's like in a deer in the headlights. Like, oh my God, what just happened? Did we score? Next play, next play. Like you said, he's thinking of the next play, but he doesn't even know what's going on. Did he ever have talk about <laughs> like, that? He, he knew what was going on. Like I said, he's just thinking about the next play. Oh, yeah, he knew he what was going on. on. <laughs> yeah. You went crazy, hey, John. Hey, I'm going to tell you, he was about ready to, was about ready to kill you. <laughs> You I went think, crazy, think, John, because think, someone think, threw the helmet on the field. Uh, one of the Michigan Panthers just threw his helmet, and you pointed and said, go pick it up. And then you started going crazy with the referee. You remember? <laughs> with, with the, well, they, said, they, they eventually said his, his momentum carried him in, but I don't think Dad was too happy with Fred Logan uh, doing that, if I recall right, the next week. But... Uh, uh, they said his uh, momentum carried him in. It's supposed to get the ball on the three-yard line. But anyway, we got the ball back. It worked out for us. Yeah, but, I mean, come on. It was a crazy play. Don't you think, Mr. Holloway? It was. Oh, yeah, it was a real well, crazy know. play. I think, our team, I think our team took on the personality of Coach Stanley. You know, no matter what happens, we were always calm. We were always collective. We always knew we was going to win somehow. Uh, we didn't know how, but we knew we was going to get it done. So we didn't we – didn't, um, we didn't, we didn't put ourselves under any type of pressure. Uh, like I said, we took on the personality of Coach Stanley. Two questions I have real quick. In the 84 season, Panthers should have repeated. Yeah. I mean, they had basically the same team. The only thing is that, yes, uh, AC went down. 
Mr. Holloway picked up the slack, and everybody seemed to to come together at certain points. But there was a moment, Novo, where you were about to kick off, and the announcer says, and I was looking for the video. I know I have it, but I couldn't find it because I've been editing all week. But he says, oh, and Novo just got a, con a brand new contract. And, uh, you know, for a kicker getting 300000 uh, that's amazing. <laughs> and, of course, you had Ken Lacey, who was negotiating with the Chiefs. And the word that was going around, Matt, you can chime in on this too. The word that was going around was that everybody was focused on their money, on their own money, instead of focus on the season. And that's why you and the, you were out in the first round of the playoffs, but there were some dissensions. Is that nah, true? I, I don't, and no, that's not uh, true what was the real deal? And Novo, did you get paid three hundred thousand dollars when you when you when they bumped you up in salary? Oh no no no, that's absolutely not true. Let's put it this way. I mean, uh, at that time, and believe it or not, Frankie, my first contract that I signed with the Michigan Panthers, it was a two year contract. It was thirty five, forty five thousand. And so I went from 35, the second, third, and fourth year for the 84, 85, and 86 season. It went from uh, 35,000 to 75 uh, to uh, 70,000, uh, 90,000 to 110,000 dollars with incentives. There was a lot of incentives there if I was the MVP and if I kicked so many field goals and percentages and anything over 50 yards, stuff like that. So it was uh, the incentives that I had in my contract. But not <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but it was basically three years. That's what you're talking about, and that's why it looked inflated. But it made it sound like you got a big raise, and now all of a sudden dissension starts. As I, as I was listening to all this back in the uh, '80s, that the salaries is what caused you guys to basically not work together like you did in '83. True. I would not you. agree. With, I would not. I, I, I'm going to tell you, Frank. That's not. Uh, I. I, I will speak for everybody else. One thing is we did have some players like Bobby Aber was holding out the second year and there were a few players. As a matter of fact, even as I was even quoted uh, questioning if the ownership wanted to pay the players because we won a championship. We had some great players. They should have got paid more money. And it was not about us being like for ourselves, like being selfish about uh, money, but uh, it, it was, uh, there were some contracts that needed to be negotiated, but uh, as far as uh, not focusing on winning, absolutely not. An AC injury and few other injuries that we did have in 1984. And speaking for myself, that was my MVP season that I had. And I do believe I had six winning kicks, 22 for 27 or 28. And I came short, as a matter of fact, uh, missing two field goals, crucial field goals against LA Express in the playoffs. And the onside kick with uh, Steve Spurrier. Yeah. <laughs> so, you no, know, but it's, uh, you, you, I look back, Frankie, believe me, there's not a day that I don't think about that game and that kick, but it is what it is. I cannot bring it back. Nobody wanted that kick more than I did. But unfortunately, God did not want me to go through that one. <laughs> For whatever reason, I had to accept it. Frank, Frankie, let's do this. <laughs> Your mic is cutting out. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. No, so but let's do this, Frankie. My dinner just got here. I haven't eaten. I'm 240 pounds. I gotta eat. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I got a girl figure that I gotta keep up. Uh, and I'm noticing some uh, issues on with the with Google right now. I don't want it to cut out on us. So if you guys are all kind of pose because. I know Frankie's got more questions. I got a lot more questions. I want to get John on. I want to get Bobby on. Would you guys all be opposed to coming back next Monday for a part two with the Michigan Panthers? Part two sounds good, man. Oh, absolutely. I'm in. I don't have no problem with it. Good. Maybe we could get Bobby back and John. And well, right, that's exactly what I'll do. Is uh, Frank, I'll get with you because I got a way where we can get where I can help it to where we get Bobby and John back on too. But I do, I do want to finish dirty with this last video. Uh, we can say goodbye now, and I want to finish with this last video. Don't do it. Wait, wait. I see if I can rustle up a few more players too. There you go. Got to do this. First. Thank you for joining us on the USFL Alumni and Legend Show. I am dirty. 
my co-host next to me, Frankie, you know, it looks like he didn't get his $2 hooker haircut. Looks like it's finally starting to grow back out there in Guatemala. Speaking next to him is the sack man, you know, Chris Mason. loves you, sir. The one, the only, John Coker. Where can people find you, sir? Hey, I'm right here in Fort Worth, Texas. There you go. And right below him is I'm in Novi, Novi, Michigan. I got a question for Novo because, you know, he says he's in, you know, he played for the Cardinals. So, being from Yugoslavia, I got a lot of questions from him because he's over by now in St. Louis that he has a lot of Bosnian and Yugoslavia roots now <laughs> in St. Louis. So, I got to ask him a question about being with the Cardinals back in the day in 86, what it was like. Novo, where can people find you at? Oh, I'm in Novi, Michigan. There you go. Mr. Stanley, where can people find you? Just right up the road from Corker, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. There you go. And, Mr. Holloway, you see that beautiful Panthers helmet? You know, they would be my team. That's, original. <laughs> That's my original helmet right there. There you go. Mr. Holloway, where can people find you? Man, I'm down here in hot-ass Houston, Texas, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be 95 degrees tomorrow, man. It's going to be 95. <laughs> it's going to be 95. It's hot down here, boy. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hollow, if you can get if you can get Mr. Abra back, uh, Bobby back, and maybe AC and the others uh, to do part two, and maybe we can work out these technical issues. Uh, no problem. I, I see why I can wrestle up. Hey, hey listen, that. listen, Frankie. Can I get uh, my guys here to send Bobby Abra some money to pay for the internet so we can get? <laughs> <all the internet? laughs> hey, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Just make sure. <laughs> That Frankie said we're gonna take a do a uh, go fund me for his internet. <laughs> we are gonna end this show with a wonderful memory, and this is uh, all of you. This is for, for all of you. Thank you for the memories. I know we're gonna do a part two. Uh, God willing, all the technical issues are done. But I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for doing this, Mr. Holloway, helping me out, Mr. Corker, and Novo. I still got a problem with you. Pick with you. <laughs> Uh, and Matt, play the video, Frankie. Uh, Thanks for inviting us, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Frankie, so nice you to see you. Really remember you, hey, hey, well, you guys. Enjoy the man. We'll see you the next time, man. Here, watch this. Uh, the Michigan Panthers, Alfred Tallman, for the presentation of the trophy. Alfred, 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 this is your trophy. We've come a long way, but nobody longer, nobody a longer way than the Michigan Panthers. To you and to Jim Stanley and this marvelous crew, my congratulations. Chet, we, on behalf of the Michigan Panthers football team and all these guys out here, the greatest in America, the greatest football players ever, thank you very much. We love it. We'll take it home and we'll take good care of it. As the champagne flows, the people in the Michigan dressing room start to go a little bit crazy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.